Hey guys, it's your guy in the chair here, and look, these are my top 10 worst movies of 2023. Now look, before I get into this list, I just want to let people know that the top 10 worst, in my opinion, is just a combination of movies that I just didn't necessarily feel like resonated with me, movies I was disappointed by, movies I thought were just, you know, plain bad, and movies I was just completely bored from, and sitting in these theaters watching these films, look... I understand everybody's top 10 worst is going to be different. I understand that top 10 worst means a lot of different things to people, but what I'm just trying to clarify here is if my list is not the same as yours or if you see movies on here that you think shouldn't be there, I'm sorry. I did my best. If you see movies on here that you thought should have been on this list, well, I didn't hate a lot of movies as much as others. Now, I didn't think they were good. Like. For example, The Flash is not on here. For those who were hoping that I would be trashing on The Flash, no, I didn't expect that movie to be good, so it just, it literally met my expectations, so it's not on this list at all. Ant-Man's not on this list either, although I do understand 1,000% why that is on a lot of people's lists. Ant-Man, for me, was not one to make it just because Kang was good enough for it just to miss this list a smidge. But for the movies that are on here, yeah, I just wasn't feeling them whatsoever, and I just want to clarify that if it is a movie on here, like I said, if you liked it and it's on this list, I'm sorry. If you felt like a movie, one of these movies shouldn't be on here, should be should be replaced with something else, I'm sorry. It's, it's my list, so it's all I can do. But without further ado, let's get on to this list. Alright, so at number 10, before I get into what that movie is, I do have to apologize to the people who saw my top 10 worst movies list on TikTok because I put at number 10 House Party, which that is not the movie that I'm going to be choosing here for this list, but that's because I was watching Ferrari and it reminded me of another movie that I really just had a very big disgustful hate for and it was mainly because the movie was just so disappointing and I had such high hopes for it and it really just let me down badly. Ferrari reminded me of this film and so I decided when I was making my notes for this uh, video here that I would give House Party some some leeway just because it, it really didn't need to be made anyway but I mean it is what it is it's still not a good movie whatsoever but I felt like I should give House Party a break because I don't think anybody really expected that movie to be good but as far uh, as far as a movie that I expected to be great not just good I expected this movie to be great and it let me down significantly at number 10 I have Napoleon yeah yeah I know I know a lot of people like this movie a lot of people really think this movie is really good for me like I said, I watched this movie twice, and coming out of my first screening, the only thing I thought that was good or salvageable about these movies are the battle sequences. And when you watch this movie a second time, it takes so much longer to get to the battle sequences from the boring-ass narrative that this movie is presenting to you. It is frustratingly boring. I am very just upset like i said i'm not going to go over like full details and like literally review these movies all over again just giving my overall thoughts i'm just the napoleon josephine dynamic frustrated me the entire film because it's like we just couldn't find anything else to focus this man's life on and it's just it's one of the most disappointing biopics from one of who I would say one of the best directors in Hollywood, or at least a very acclaimed director, I would say. I mean, maybe he's not one of the best, but Ridley Scott's damn sure very acclaimed, and he's got some good, he's got some hits. So I was expecting big things from this and, and Joaquin Phoenix, but I was just completely let down by this entire film. All right, at number nine, I have The Megalodon 2, The Trench. Yeah, Jason Statham's here. Um, I wish he wasn't here because, well, I mean, I wish he wasn't doing these movies because The Meg, whenever the first one came out, that made my worst movies of whatever year that movie came out, list two, and here we are, surprise, surprise, The Meg 2, it's on my list yet again. This movie, but the, the problem with this movie is just, it takes itself way too seriously. Like, I don't think they really understood what the assignment was, that your movie is literally about a giant shark just bigger than the last one. And you have Jason Statham in this movie, so it doesn't need to be serious whatsoever. But they decided to make the first, like, hour and 15 minutes of this film a planet planet Earth type of documentary. And it just it just didn't need to be that. It It's a movie about a giant shark. You guys didn't make need to make this more difficult than it already had to be. And then just the the immense stupidity that this film just has throughout 
its entire runtime. It's just, it's just not good. I'm sorry, but I think the beekeeper will be better. At least I'm hoping. Come on, Jason. Come on, Jason. All right, at number eight, I have The Nun 2. Yep, surprise, surprise. The Nun, whenever the first movie came out, which I think is like 2018, 2019, maybe 2019, whenever that came out, that movie was on my worst movies of that year list as well. And here we are with the sequel, which I'm not even sure how this thing got greenlit. The Nun was, the first movie was really bad. Who, like, liked that movie enough for this thing to get green, for this sequel to get greenlit? And it's just a continuation of the same boring story, bor well, boring and predictable story that you're seeing in the first movie. Like, it's just a continuation of that with just more careless jump scares, more careless characters, more story, more just nonsense that really just doesn't connect to anything in the Conjuring universe. Please kill these movies. Y'all have already turned the nun who I believe in the Conjuring 2 is one of the best characters in the film other than the Crooked Man. Those are two of the best characters in the Conjuring 2 and you've completely just tarnished her name. Stop making these movies. This doesn't need to be a thing anymore. Please just kill this. Please, just, I'm begging you to end this. All right, at number seven, we have Five Nights at Freddy's. Look, I understand this movie has its, um, what is it? What are they, like, uh, this this cult following that it's it's going this movie is now going to have because of the people who love the video games i loved watching people playing the video games shout out to markiplier once again i loved watching people play the video games itself and i thought the story and lore was good enough in order for them to make a very entertaining movie and one where they could actually make some sequels that they could get into the very dark history of what this game is but unfortunately they made a movie that was so suffocatingly boring I had no interest in, in, in them even trying to make another one after this film. This movie was just not it. And like I said, I understand this movie has its cult following. People who played the games found themselves to enjoy this film. I wish I could say the same. This this one for me was just not it whatsoever. It was way too predictable. A waste of Matthew Lillard. Josh Hutcherson is Josh Hutcherson, it's it's just it's just a complete mess, and I can't remember the girl for some reason who played the female cop in this film, but she, y'all gotta teach people to kind of like sell stuff, like just sell the fact that you don't know something. Like it, this movie the entire time was just literally dangling keys right in front of you, like we can't see the keys, them dangling the keys right in front of us. We're like, we know where this thing is headed, and you're holding it right in front of us. I don't know if you know that, but we can see you, but. I hope that example made sense. Either way, this movie's crap. On to the next one. All right, so at number six, we have Strays. Now look, normally I say that, you know, there for me, there's really nothing worse than a bad comedy movie because you just sit there, there's nothing worse than just sitting there not laughing, but the only thing worse I can think of is the next five movies that follow this one, but as far as number six, yeah, Strays. This movie was painfully unfunny. Like, it was just a bunch of toilet bowl shit humor jokes that really get you nowhere. Um, per personally, from what I remember of this movie, which I only saw it once, because that's honestly all the only time I needed to see it, it makes you laugh for maybe a period of like two to three minutes, and then it's followed by 10 to 15 minutes of just complete nonsense and not hysterical nonsense, it's literally just complete nonsense that you're just sitting there with the straightest face thinking, how is this funny? How is anyone thinking that this is actually a funny movie? I have no idea whatsoever. Will Ferrell's more idiotic characters, which I talked about in my review of this film, they kind of, you know, grind my gears, but I mean, sometimes his idiotic characters play out to be very hysterical and funny. In this case, not even close and it was a damn good voice cast too so i'm not necessarily sure how they missed on this one but oh i am because i the trailer looked pretty stupid to me in the first place but this is just this is just a complete swing and a miss please don't try to do anything like this again all right at number five we got mafia mama i i just felt bad for tony collette this entire movie this was this was atrocious this movie was really bad like she not only was Tony Collette just playing a very dull, dumb version of not necessarily herself. Well, 
I, I mean, maybe, but look, Toni Collette is a brilliant actress, and just to see her go from Hereditary to Knives Out to, I mean, you know, actors they have to work, they have to do, you know, they have to do movies for a paycheck. This is basically Toni Collette's version of that, literally just doing a movie to make some to make some money and feed her family, because. I, I still to this day cannot put piece together why she wanted to do this film. I'm not sure what drew her to it, but we are hoping that she never does anything like this again because absolutely not. Absolutely not. All right, at number four, we got Insidious the Red Door. If you've seen this movie, you should understand where I'm coming from immediately. Like, just hearing Insidious should give you just complete spine-tingling heebie-jeebies, and not for good reasons at all. It's because this movie was complete and utter garbage. I mean, once they pulled up to a college campus, I knew this movie was heading downhill very fast. We had nowhere, we had nowhere for this story to go whatsoever, because if there's anything I know about pulling up to a college campus, or if there's anything that Gemini Man taught me, it's that bringing someone to a college campus means the end. Means that we really just did not have any ideas whatsoever. And if you've never seen Gemini Man, I wouldn't recommend you watch it. But to understand that college reference, you'd have to see Gemini Man. So watch it, watch it at your own uh, discretion, I guess. But look, as far as Insidious... What was this movie called? The Red Door? Yeah, The, the Red Door. It's a very painfully boring continuation or ending to this incredible franchise i'm not gonna lie now the last key which i really thought should have been the last film was not that good either but the first three Inf insidious films are very good and they can kind of you know at least leave you with some sort of like honestly nobody remembers the last key so we all really just really appreciated those first three films nobody really remembers the last key we only were really there for the old lady but i mean other than that nobody nobody would have remembered that film but you just had to go make another one had to go make another one and bring the red lipstick monster back into it and ruin his name too what did he do to, what did he do to deserve this movie he didn't do anything to y'all patrick wilson right, come on man you, you patrick wilson just he he, he he made a swing and a miss, which happens, but this was one of the bigger misses of the year, and for me, this movie just was not it whatsoever. I I don't need any more Insidious movies. We can be done with this franchise, which I think this is supposed to be the last one anyway, but just for the hopes I had going into this and the way I felt walking out, we don't need to attempt this ever again. All right, at number... Th oh, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, at number three, I got Your Place or Mine, and I absolutely adore rom-coms, and this, it, it really doesn't take much for, like, rom-coms to get me on board. It doesn't really take much for me to be entertained by a rom-com. Rom-coms are my guilty pleasure to where they can be really bad, but as long as I am into the main couple and they have chemistry, it doesn't really matter what's going on in the rest of the film. I'll, I'll, I'll like it for what it is. But this has this movie has got to be one of the worst romantic comedies I've ever seen in my life. It is truly, truly bad. I mean, Ashton Kutcher and Reese Witherspoon have no chemistry whatsoever. Everything that people were saying about the the You People film that came out in Jan earlier or last year in January with um, Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill. Everybody that, like, all the complaints people had about that movie, I saw all of those f um, criticisms in this film here. The fact that there's no chemistry between the two, the movie's not funny, it's written very poorly. Honestly, I didn't even understand the gist of, like, making them live in separate locations. And, and I understand that, that locations were her, was Reese Witherspoon, like, Reese Witherspoon's home and Ashton Kutcher's apartment, or, you know, they're, they're basically swapping lives or whatever, however you want to put this, but not only was that plot in incredibly stupid, but it's just like this movie built no chemistry between the two, so by the time the ending gets around, you're just like, you two don't, I'm not even sure you two like each other, like, is this, is, are, is this even real? Like, what, is what I just watched for a whole hour and like 40 minutes or how, however long this movie is, was this even necessary? Was this worth it? Because you two... 
I don't know how you get Ashton Kutcher and Reese Witherspoon together and you can't make chemistry. You can't make magic happen. It's just kind of beyond me, but hopefully we just never have to go through this again. All right, at number two, we got 6-5. So bouncing off of Mafia Mama and talking about actors having to just do movies because they need to feed their families. Well, this is Adam Driver's example of that because... This, oh my gosh, this movie was pure shit. This 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 was pretty bad. This movie, like like the most I can give you is I've only seen it once. It was boring as hell. They somehow made a futuristic tone or like a futuristic sci-fi movie with dinosaur elements. They, they somehow made that boring. Adam Driver has futuristic laser technology and he's fighting against dinosaurs or on a planet of dinosaurs. Somehow they just made that movie incredibly boring. The young girl that plays in the movie barely is a factor. Don't remember her performance whatsoever. She doesn't even talk until maybe like 40 or 45 minutes into the movie and by then you are already bored out of your mind just waiting for the credits to roll. I, never again. I've only seen it once, but now that I've talked about it, I literally just want to do the Men in Black and just erase that movie from my memory. And I'd love to erase it from all yours, so if we can all just join hands and do this. And at number one, we have a movie where I literally kid you not, I was in the theater by myself and I was so bored to the point where I just had to break out and just start doing push-ups in the theater just to pass the time. I was so bored throughout this entire film. It was just a bunch of ridiculous stupidity going on from beginning to end, and I really just had no patience for it whatsoever, but I do not walk out of movies. That is not something that I uh, advocate for at all. I mean, not only because, like, not it's not really because of the fact that, you know, I spend my hard-earned money, you know, it's, it's not really that notion. It's just... I, I love movies too much to really just walk out, you know, like, I, like, cause some part of me is going to wonder, okay, even if the movie was completely ass, I gotta know how it ended, so like, I don't like to give myself those sort of anxiety feelings, but, I'm um, sorry, I'm taking too long to get to what movie this is. At number one, we have Fool's Paradise. Now, a lot of you pr probably never even heard of this movie, but it stars Charlie Day, uh, Kate, ba no, Kate Beckinsale, uh, Ken Jeong, Adrian Brody, has a lot of people in this movie, man. Um, I can't think of my man that just passed away. Uh, Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta's in this movie. Um, it's got a lot of... It's like... it's like uh, I don't know if you guys ever saw Amsterdam with uh, Christian Bale, John David Washington, and Margot Robbie, but it's like that movie, just a cameo fest of absolute non-cynical bullshit. It's... it's or nonsensical bullshit, I should say. It's it's just a lot of just nonsense going on. This movie is so boring. It's not funny whatsoever. Like Strays, like that's one of the unfunniest comedies I've seen this year. Fool's Paradise. It was supposed to be funny, but I promise you, I I, I missed the joke. I I missed the joke completely because I did not laugh more than maybe like three times in this film, and it has at least seventy five jokes it wants to set up for you, and none of them hit. This movie was absolutely boring. But look, that rounds out my top 10 worst of the year list. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff and so much more. Comment below your top 10 worst movies of the year. What did you think of my list? What didn't you agree with? What, you, what did you think could have been here? Now, I know I said in the beginning of the video, I'm sorry if a movie that you made or that um, a movie, if a movie that you believe should be on this list isn't here, I'm sorry, or vice versa. But I still want to hear you guys' opinions and get a conversation started. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate it, guys. Look, Happy New Year to everyone. Go out there. Just be positive. Be yourselves. Let's try to just make the world a better place as much as, as, much as we can. It's a, crazy, it's a crazy world out there. And honestly, just being yourself helps every so often. Or every little bit. I don't know. I was just trying to be positive and, you know, send out positive vibes for the year. Because I really do appreciate you guys watching all my videos and just giving me the support that I need. I promise I'm going to make this channel a lot better this year. And I'm going on a crazy, just motivational rant. So I was so sorry about that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Look, this is your guy in the chair. More content coming to you soon.